I'm Max Forsyth, Operations Coordinator for Bard on the Beach. And I'm on a quest this summer. I'm in search of the Bard beyond the beach. So come with me as we explore Vancouver's history, nature, and look for stories as we go looking for the Bard. Stanley Park. Why are we here today? Well, we're looking for the Bard. Is it Shakespeare? Does Shakespeare live in these woods? No, he doesn't. I'm looking for a different Bard, one who had made a profound impact on this city, even though she lived here for a short time at the end of her life. She gave the name to the Lost Lagoon. I'm talking, of course, of Pauline Johnson. Come with me, we're gonna find her monument somewhere in these woods. In the early 1900s, the English starling was introduced to North America by the Royal Shakespeare Society of New York City. They wanted to introduce every bird mentioned in the Bard's plays. And now it's an invasive species. Hmm. Oh. oh, where is it? There it is. Here we are. Emily Pauline Johnson, or E. Pauline Johnson, was a very famous poet and orator in her time, the late 19th and early 20th century. She was of mixed ancestry, of Mohawk and European descent, and there's a lot of interesting conversation behind how she performed her acts. Later in life, she retired to here, Vancouver, where allegedly she became friends with Chief Joe Capilano, who shared with her the stories and legends of his people and of this land. She later compiled it into Legends of Vancouver. Let's read some of the legends and explore the locations of the park together. Come on. We're almost at Siwash Rock, which legend tells was once a man turned into stone. See it down there? That's Siwash Rock, a really wonderful story behind the rock. In Legends of Vancouver, Pauline Johnson recalls it. I'm gonna read some of the poetry to you, but a little fun fact, well, not so fun, but apparently her ashes were spread around the base of the rock. Not sure if it's true or not, but anyways, come on, let's read some stuff. But the tall gray column of stone will still be there, a monument to one man's fidelity to a generation yet unborn, and will endure from everlasting to everlasting. Oh, lure of the lost lagoon, I dream tonight that my paddle blurs the purple shade where the seaweed stirs. I hear the call of the singing firs in the hush of the golden moon. From the peaks of the two sisters, down the Capilano River, to Point Grey and beyond, there are so many wondrous stories and legends of Vancouver. I highly recommend you finding a copy and reading these stories and enjoying the land. So many beautiful trees and gardens here. I wonder what this garden's called. Shakespeare's Garden. <laughs> That's right. In 1936, the Vancouver Shakespeare Society formed an alliance with the Kilby Shakespeare Circle. And for Vancouver's Golden Jubilee, they planted this entire arboretum. 
Shakespeare's Garden. The garden actually started a few years earlier in 1916 with the planting of this English oak tree by Mrs. Jonathan Rogers, patron of the arts for Vancouver. She wanted to plant it to commemorate the 300 year anniversary of the bard's death. Let's go look at some more trees. Ava Moore, the famous actress and suffragette, planted this oak tree in the early 1900s. She called it comedy. <laughs> now, let's go look at this tree. Come on. Oh, this tree was planted by Sir John Martin Harvey. He was more serious, so he called it tragedy. Let's look at some more trees. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. This tree is a black locust. And the quote is from Othello. The food that to him is as luscious as locusts shall be to him shortly as bitter as coloquintita. Maybe I'll have better with the next tree. Follow me. Ah, wow. Now this is a beautiful monumental tree. It is an Atlas cedar. Indeed it is. And the quote is from Henry VIII, who was pretty much the Atlas cedar tree of men. Let's read the quote. And like a mountain cedar, reach his branches to all plains about him. Our children's children shall see this and bless heaven. Okay, let's go. Okay, a black walnut. Very nice. And the quote is from Taming of the Shrew. Why, tis a cockler or a walnut shell, a knack, a toy, a trick, a baby's cap. Haha! This is the red oak. It's a glorious specimen. The worthy fellow is our general. He is the rock, the oak, not to be windshaken. Coriolanus. Aha! Oh, western red cedar. One of the finest trees in these parts of the world. Marcus, we are but shrubs, no cedars. We, no big bone men framed of the Cyclops size, Titus Andronicus. Well, there you have it. Shakespeare's Garden in Stanley Park. It really is quite lovely here. I highly recommend coming to look at the trees and read the plaques. Just watch out for old Shakespeare. He might get you. Now let's slow things down a bit and talk a little bit more about the place that we're at. Come with me. Let's go over here. There's a lot of history in Stanley Park. Where I'm standing right now is Lumberman's Arch. And what used to exist here was the Squamish settlement of Huai Huai. People have lived here for over 3,000 years. And in 1888, they were all evicted and the homes destroyed to make way for the first road across Stanley Park. A lot of conflicting history to learn, so I hope you read more and join me for more episodes of Bart Around Town. Ah, hello. Thank you so much for watching our very first episode of Bart Around Town. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Whistler Brewing, for making this video possible. I'm enjoying the Sunny Days Yuzu IPA, and it's perfect on this wonderful summer day. If you like this video and want to watch more, please like and subscribe down below, and you'll be notified for more content from Bard on the Beach. And we went through a lot of history in this episode, so please look at the descriptions below to learn more about Pauline Johnson and Stanley Park. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week on Bard Around Town.